This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, welcome back to Invest Like a Pro. This is Joe Rabel. And what I want to do today is uh, I know I'm kind of referred to, especially at StockChurch.com, the guys over there kind of refer to me as the indicator guy. Uh, but I do want to make sure people realize that price is the most important thing to me. And what I want to do today is show price in multiple time frames using I do I am going to use an indicator called the zigzag, but it really it just enforces the price swings at the key levels. And I want to show you how I would go about using this and how I suggest doing this in the course. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, get into this. Let's just first just say um, if you have an interest in learning more about trend and momentum in multiple time frames, I do go into MACD and ADX in the book uh, and in the course as well. But I would say if you're going to start, I would just start out with the book. I'm sh I'm offering at a discount right now in an e-book e format. Uh, so go ahead and take a look at that. It's at rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book. All right, let's go ahead and get going in this. Okay, I'm showing a chart of the QQQ. I've got my grid up, all right? So that's the monthly in the bottom left, weekly in the bottom right, daily in the upper right, and hourly in the upper left. I do suggest uh, using this approach when uh, using multiple time frames. I've found it to be uh, very helpful in terms of just, I don't know what it is about the mind, but I learned this a long time ago. We kind of want to look at it in a... Um, a counterclockwise fashion. Uh, and uh, so anyway, it served me well. So I thought I'd just mention that. All right. So um, as we look at these time frames, uh, the thing I want you to do, it, it, first of all, to learn an indicator, you definitely want to take everything else off the chart. And in this case, we're kind of stripping away all indicators and, and just using the zigzag as a way of um, creating a structure for us, mathematically creating structure for us. So we don't have to determine, you know, okay, is is this a reversal or is it not? Is this a reversal or is it, you know, how about this, right? That's, that's a little tricky right there because I think your eye would call that a reversal and maybe even this. But, and I know sometimes it won't be perfect. Like maybe that should be included, but the reality is, is what we should be doing is letting the math do the work. And what that what that offers us is the ability to be consistent. I've talked more and more about being consistent than anything else. That to me is the true goal here. And in all of your work in terms of analysis, if you can be consistent, I think it's going to serve you uh, well over time. It might not help on one specific trade, but over the course of hundreds of trades, it will serve you very, very well. All right. So what we want to do is start out by saying, I want to do my trend analysis. I want to put in my trend lines, the key trend lines. Now, what I've done, if you notice, is the, the solid lines are the trend lines that are still intact. They have not been violated, broken, or reversed. All right, so you can go through and see I've got an uptrend line in place in the QQQ, and it's been in place for a very long time. This is the latest uh, trend line right now using this was the last high. We go back to the, the, the previous swing low uh, after the last high, right, when we're going up. And uh, that's our anchor point. This is our anchor point. And then we just kind of go back and figure out, based on this chart, I mean, if I scrolled back more, I probably could have made it a longer trend line. But this is a good trend line. Let me explain something about trend lines. All right. This is something that could really help you. First of all, if you have three touches to a trend line, all right, three touches being, this is going to be the first touch every time, right? The starting point. That's one touch. If you have another touch and another touch, so you've had three touches, if you have three of them and the trend lasts six months or more, six months, you have a important trend line. This is a trend line you need to be uh, aware of, watching, know what's going on with it. If, if that happens, we want to know if it's broken, especially if it's a sideways line. Right. If we've gone sideways and touched a, a sideways line, um, you know, three times or more over six months, when that breaks to the upside, we want to know about it. Now, um, 
when we look at all this, we've got an uptrend line that's very important on the on the monthly chart. Now, it's pretty far away, right? Now, if we end up making a new high here, we can alter the trend line and do this, okay? So that doesn't necessarily eliminate this as an important trend line down here, but if we get that trend line accelerated to the upside, we do want to be aware of that because that's how we're going to do our trend analysis. And we would keep both of these lines solid. Now, if you notice what I've done over here on the weekly chart, we have a trend line break that um, led to a one, two, three reversal. Okay. And I let, I, I'm leaving the lines on there as a reference point, but they're dotted, meaning they're, they're no longer in, you know, in force. All right. Now, what, what's in place right now is an uptrend line on the weekly chart. So we've got an uptrend line on the monthly and uptrend line on the weekly. It's hard to call these bear trends on these time frames. You can't really do that at this point. Um, they're still making higher highs and higher lows. Right. We, we need to know this no matter what the moving averages are doing, no matter what indicators are doing. You need to know this first and foremost. What is taking place in each one of these time frames? Now, if we go to the daily chart, a little trickier, we broke the trend line, we rallied up, and then came back down and took out this low. So we had a one, two, three to the downside, um, but really we're going to need, and we probably will, take out this low. We might even do it today. Um, I'm doing this Monday before the market opens. So it's uh, very possible that... Um, this will come down and um, break this low. If that were to happen, then we'd have a little bit more of a confirmed trend. But look at what's taken place. Now, this has not gone six months, but look at this. Uh, we have a touch, very close to a touch, 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 touch. You see how important this trend line? That, that trend line is important, even though it hasn't gone a, that long. For a daily chart to go you know, four or five months like that and be touched that many times. We do want to be aware of that level. So if you notice, it's pretty wild. We actually undercut this level and then rallied up and failed at it. If we come back down and hold here and turn back up, I think we'd have to have some respect uh, for the potential for reversal. Because keep in mind, we'd still be above this. This trend line would still be intact. And uh, then we'd be turning this back to the upside. All right. Now, uh, we'd go to our indicators to help with the timing. We might not want to take the trend line break. We might want to wait for something a little bit more significant. Now, if you notice this daily chart, we've gone up, uh, we've come down, we've gone up, we've come down, we've gone up. Well, look at what's going on on the hourly chart. The hourly chart is showing us the last up move and decline right there. Okay. And we had our one, two, three to the downside. It's now down to the lower end. And we have um, this trend line actually could still be a uh, solid, but it's not really in force because we have an accelerated trend line now. All right. So once you have this accelerated trend line, this carries a little bit less significance. And the reason why I probably wouldn't have it and I cr actually created it as a dotted line is because it's only two touches. See that? So I, I think, uh, you know, the ones that have three or more touches that last a little bit longer, I think are, are more important trend lines. Now, you can always keep those, the ones that haven't been broken and they're still in force, you can always keep those out there. They could come into play later on. But if you notice what's happening here, this um, hourly chart is reversing down and turning back up and then reversing or I'm sorry yeah reversing down and then it's reversing back up and then it's reversing back down and that's showing you what's taking place on this time frame uh, on the daily chart so we use this time frame to help um, really help us with the timing of this time frame and then we use this time frame to help us with the timing of this time frame and then you do the same thing with these two so we want to, and so this is the key that I wanted to get across today. You need to know what is taking place on a price basis only. That way, when you throw the moving averages on there, when you throw your, your MACD and your ADX up there, you now have using those things as confirmation to what you're seeing here. But your eyes have to first see the price structure and what's taking place on this stuff first. And then you'll see failure setups 
So if we have something that looks like a downtrend starting on the moving averages, but really it's just coming in the zone, coming out, and then turning back to the upside, well, I, I notice a lot that this is just a move to the downside in price and then a move back up. And then instead of going to a new low, it actually fails. A lot of times it's like a, a failed one, two, three. This would be the succeeding breaking 300 would be in this example would be where the one, two, three actually succeeds where it comes down out of the zone and then turns back up is actually a failure of the one, two, three. You want to be on the lookout for those and you want to know the exact price level. And that'll show up by using the zigzag and these uh, price formations. So keep this in mind when you're doing any analysis on the market, any analysis on an individual stock, focus on price and use all the indicators that I use as supplemental tools to support your thesis on the price action. All right. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.